Have you ever wanted to create your own custom calendar for your fantasy or sci-fi story? Or perhaps you just need a place to keep track of events. Campfire's calendar module helps you do all this. Let's see how it works. To create a new calendar, log into Campfire, open a project, and navigate to the sidebar on the left side of your screen. Click the plus button to the right of calendar under the elements tab. You can create one calendar for free, so follow along with us as we check it out. If you'd like to rename your calendar, you can do that in the details tab. After you've named it, you can collapse the sidebar so you have more room to work. By default, the calendar module will give you a blank Gregorian calendar to work with, the kind of calendar most of us use in our day-to-day -day lives. Located above the calendar, in the toolbar, there are a bunch of controls to help you navigate and edit the calendar. For example, these left and right arrows navigate to the next or previous month. You can click this icon to the right to go to another month, year, or era. Over here, you can change your calendar's view from months to years. To create a calendar event, click the Add Event button, or right-click a day in the Months view and select Add Calendar Event. Calendar events give you a space to keep track of your character's birthdays, custom holidays, celestial events, and more. With the Advanced Editor, you can take them to the next level. Give events a start and end date, schedule repeating events, and assign filters. Here are a few examples to see how this works. Solstices and equinoxes always fall on the first day of a new season, but the exact date varies. So how do you set this up when the event doesn't always fall on the same date or day of the week? To create the summer solstice, first make the event, then turn on the event repeats option and set it to happen daily. Of course, the summer solstice doesn't happen every day, so you also need to scroll down to the observance filters and turn those on as well. Observance filters limit when your events can appear on the calendar, which is exactly what you need to properly schedule the solstice. Find the during nth day of season option and set that to the first day of summer. Now, even though you set the event to occur every day of the year, it can only appear on the first day of summer, wherever that may fall. Let's do one more and recreate Thanksgiving, which always falls on the fourth Thursday of November in the United States. Again, fill out some information about the holiday here on the left and turn on the event repeats and observance filters settings. Under the repeat options, make Thanksgiving recur monthly on the fourth Thursday. Using the observance filters, find during month and set it to November. Now, all together, this means you have an event repeating every fourth Thursday, appearing only during November. Those of you already familiar with Campfire might be wondering if you can also view your timeline events in the calendar module. The short answer is yes. You'll need to create events in the timeline module first and select a custom calendar under the calendar type option. Once you've done that, your events should automatically appear on the calendar on the dates you've assigned to them with a small hourglass icon indicating they're from the timeline. If you would like to learn more about the timeline module, we have a separate tutorial dedicated to it linked in the description. Properties available in the Calendars toolbar allows you to edit the structure of your calendar. There are five properties in the calendar module, eras, months, weeks, moons, and seasons. You can switch between each on the left of the properties modal. Eras are more or less the way years are grouped together in the calendar. BCE and CE are listed by default, but you can make custom eras fit for your setting. To create an era, click New Era here, and a third one appears in the list. Note that the order of eras determines their order in the calendar too, so if you drag your new custom era into the middle, like this, it will register on your calendar as taking place between BCE and CE. 
Next, fill out the era's name, abbreviation, and start in end years. Easy as that. Months are where things start to get interesting. Most of your months will probably be pretty simple, like January. Fill out a name, abbreviation, and the total number of days in that month. To make a month with leap days, or a leap month, click the More button and find Intercalary Options. If you need leap days, select Includes Intercalary Days. If it's a leap month, select Intercalary Month. These settings will enable a couple of extra options. February is a great example to see how a leap day is scheduled every four years. It has a setting for a number of leap days where you'll put one, since there's just one leap day in the month. Interval tells your calendar how often to schedule the leap days. Since February's leap day occurs once every four years, this should be set to four. Offset allows you to change the first instance of the leap year. For February, we need that to 3 so that we can align it with the Gregorian calendar's leap days. Weeks are where you schedule the weeks and days in your calendar. In the Gregorian calendar, there is only one 7-day week, but you don't have to keep it that way. Click New Week to create a second week style and add 4 days to it using this plus button. Give each one a name and be sure to mark your weekend days while you're at it, if your setting has them. If you want to alternate between the 7 day and 4 day weeks, you can set that up by turning on alternating weeks. Add your two weeks into the alternating weeks area here and it's as easy as that. Now your calendar has two kinds of weeks. Moons are super important to a lot of calendars so we wanted to make sure you could edit them. You'll start out with an entry for Earth's moon, but we all know that two moons are cooler than one. Click New Moon and give it a name, then decide its cycle or the amount of time it takes to revolve around the planet. That determines the time between its phases. For example, it takes our moon 29.5 days to revolve around Earth, so each quarterly phase is about seven days apart. Also, if you have multiple moons, give them different colors so it's easier to tell them apart on the calendar. Finally, you're able to create custom seasons for your setting. By default, we've included spring, summer, autumn, and winter, but you can create more or edit these existing ones. Each season has an icon, name, and a set start date. They'll end when the next season begins. If you don't want fixed start dates for each season, turn on length-based seasons. This gives them a variable start date by instead giving them fixed durations. When you have this setting active, the start month and date are replaced by a total number of days each season should last, like how our seasons last about 91 days. Calendar properties let you do some wild things, but if you already have some events made, you might accidentally remove the dates they're supposed to happen on. When that happens, we'll alert you to any invalid events and give you a chance to reschedule them here. Just correct the dates under New Start Date, or click the Edit button on the right to open the event's advanced editor. When you're finished, click Apply New Dates. This is just a taste of what Campfire's calendar module can do. Check out the full written tutorial linked in the description for more information and give it a try for free. A calendar can be a huge help to visualize how time passes and is measured by the people in your story. Creating a fantasy calendar can also help you with your world building since a new era or the name of a month is often inspired by some historical figure or event from your world. Keep an open mind when designing your calendar, and it may just help you enrich your story in a truly unique way. Leave us feedback in the comments or join our Discord server. We can't wait to see what you make with the calendar module. Thanks for watching.